I wanted to talk to one of those hurricane hunters and kind of get a perspective for you of what it's like to look and go into the storm, but also when they are looking for certain patterns and things to help us with our forecast, what that means. And I'm now going to be joined by Paul Flaherty, who is joining us. And Paul, can you tell us a little bit about the missions over the last couple of days? You've been flying for a while. Anything that sticks out to you about this storm? Hi, uh, good morning, Meredith. Thanks for having us here. Uh, I've been flying since Sunday. I didn't fly yesterday, uh, but uh, I'll be back in the air this afternoon. And uh, so we've really been following this storm since uh, it's, you know, it's infancy, really. When we, uh, the first flight that I did, uh, it was a mess. There wasn't a circulation above 18,000 feet, but it really has um, changed, you know, changed, a lot has changed over the, that time period, uh, especially when the system moved a little bit further north and got a little bit away from the shear and a little bit away from the dry air. Um, and so it did battle the dry air for a couple of days, but it's really moved away from all that. It's moving into an area of better conditions, and um, that's not good news for right now uh, anyone living along the uh, coastline of the southeast U.S. And, Paul, you and I were just chatting about this, that it's a high-end Category 4 hurricane right now. There is that potential it could become a Category 5, but I think we need to remind people it's a difference of miles per hour, and it's not the number that matters, but the impacts we could see from these storms. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Uh, we, it's certain, uh, certainly true that here in Category 5 gets people's attention, but what we really want people to know is uh, to follow the evacuation orders that they get because it won't matter whether it's a Category 4 or 5. Uh, you just don't want to be there if it uh, hits your area. Paul, when you're flying with your teammates, what are some of the things you look for or the clues to know if a hurricane is either strengthening or weakening that you can see from above? So one of the things that you don't always get on satellite, a lot of times you can, but uh, um, you know we can get that higher resolution information uh, by being on the aircraft. Uh, and so we can find areas of dry air that maybe weren't picked up uh, uh, otherwise or weren't observed at certain le different levels of the atmosphere. We're dropping drop zones uh, in, you know, in and around the eye wall and up at 45,000 feet outside uh, uh, the eye wall and the steering currents. Uh, so we are really gathering a, a whole lot of information for the weather models that, that can't otherwise be collected. So what what we want to do is, is focus on what the forecasters believe is the biggest influences on the storm uh, and also where the weather models disagree most. So if we can collect data in those areas and really define how those steering currents should, uh, uh, should work in the weather models and then uh, find those areas where the weather models most disagree because we are flying in a very data sparse area. We can find the areas where the uh, weather models most disagree, make them agree, and that's when you see those spaghetti models all start to come closer together. I have one more question for you, Paul. We know how critical and important your job is. What is it like being a hurricane hunter? You've been doing this for a while. Yeah, actually 17 years. I can't believe it. When I started, I thought I'd remember the name of every storm that I flew, and uh, <laughs> over the last 17 years, uh, the names have started to blur together. But as a meteorologist, uh, every storm is unique, and uh, it does have that wow factor. Uh, of course, there's always some negatives that can come from a storm heading to the U.S. or heading to one of our, uh, our uh, you know, friendly nations nearby. And uh, so we don't ever want anyone to have to uh, go through the effects of it. But um, if there's a storm out there and I'm flying, uh, I, it is a job. I'm swimming in data. I'm doing a lot of quality control to make sure the models get the best possible information. But there's no doubt there's times when I sit back and take a look out the window and think, wow, am I really doing this for a living? So um, uh, I'm pretty blessed to, to uh, have been uh, uh, or lucky, really, to uh, to have this job. And so uh, it's, it's good knowing at the end of the day that I'm playing a role in, in helping people be safe on the ground. So hopefully they're going to listen to those evacuation orders if they need to. We really appreciate that. that was Paul Flaherty joining us, a NOAA hurricane hunter. He's getting ready to go out on the next mission. So thank you so much for your time and everything that yourself as well as your team is doing.